don't get your hopes up. They're not. <laughs> that the total of all your all's gifts was probably about two dollars is what it cost. Me. But but I do have I do have some gifts and, and I think Melissa knows what they are. But. Uh, about them. Amen. I don't know what his plan is for them. But, but don't, we re- get, don't get nervous when he pulls it out of that. <laughs> we, we are really blessed in Indiana. I mean, we're walking in the blessing. Um, God's moving. We, we're seeing people born again and, um, you know, and just miraculous things. Amen. Amen. You know, basketball maybe not so much, but everything else we've been pretty blessed, right? I, I threw that in for my son when he watches the video. He's, he, he's, <laughs> but but everything, you know, we really are walking in a blessed time, and and as we, um, I think it was Tuesday or Tuesday. Melissa was Melissa's last day off. She worked three twelves this week. She worked Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I waited till about. 12 o'clock on um, as I was leaving you know I'd stopped in the house no I think it was that morning maybe which and I told Melissa hey this is the direction I, th- I feel like we're supposed to go so uh, you could you know prepare a little bit you know so when I got home that night she had two pages outlines there for hers and I was like <laughs> okay I'm, a, I'm impressed amen but so we, so because of that because she put so much into that I'm not gonna to uh, share on the the three days uh, today, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Out of honoring my wife at her work, Amen. But our our text today is actually going to be in Luke chapter five. And I told uh, Melissa, I said, you know, I was I was thinking, what what is something that that we could share on to build the body of Christ and and to strengthen you? And it's it's uh, you know flowing together as a people. Because we, you know, that's something within our marriage we have learned to do, to flow together, you know, to, to strengthen each other. And then our church is learning this, to flow together. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of our message. Hallelujah. It really is. You know, I was thinking, oh, well, I bet last time we shared something kind of similar to that. Well, probably because it's who we are and it's our message. You know, unity and, 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 and appreciating one another and growing together and walking together for the Lord, amen, amen. And, uh, and learning to walk together. So I'm going to share a little bit out of, uh, of Luke chapter 5 here and then, and then turn it over to Melissa. But it says here, And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of uh, Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ship, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when they had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. You know, a lot of times when we, we I've taught this passage of scripture, I've taught it in relation to finances. Because, you know, if, if, if you, you uh, take care of the Lord's business, He takes care of our business. Amen? I think that's prosperity in, in, the, in the simplest terms. We, do his, we take care of His house. He takes care of our house. Amen? And, and uh, you know, that, that is what's taking place here. You know, they allowed the Lord to use their, their ship for um, ministry. Right? To preach. And then we see what begins to happen. Uh, he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. You know, how many times have, have, have you all, uh, you know, it, it'd be one word from the Lord can change everything. And particularly finances. You know, there, there'll be just something that, that will just click. With, you know, when the times we've been under stress, uh, you know, financially and, and praying for answers and stuff. And, 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 and I, all I need is one word to stand on. And I know it's going to be okay. Launch out and let down your nets. Go to work tomorrow and do what you're supposed to do. You know, what, whatever that, that uh, word is, we take care of his house, he takes care of ours. And, 
uh, Melissa had particularly picked this passage of Scripture because it shows how did they fish? They worked together to fish, amen? It was a joint effort. It wasn't, you know, like we think of fishing, you know, I'm going to go out, don't tell anybody where my spot is and go out there by myself, <laughs> brush my tracks away so they don't know where I'm fishing, right? And then, then come and show them the fish later, right? No, they worked, they had to work together. So they had to flow together. Uh, and I let down, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. So, you know, the blessing of the Lord began to be poured out upon them when they just obeyed the voice of the Lord, did what he said. Uh, you know, the, and amen. Take it. So I'm going to start off with verse uh, 7. It says, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. So we're going to look at this, you know, so they beckoned unto their partners. You know, the full impact of... Uh, what we can do is through our partner, whether that's our church partner family or whether it's our marriage partner. You know, the full impact of what we can do is with them, with their, with us, beside mm -hmm. us. And, you know, what God has for us is too big for us to be on our own. We mm -hmm. have to partner up with us or others, and that's what he wanted to do. You know, from the very beginning and in Genesis, we see that, you know, you have Adam and Eve. Well, from the very beginning, fruit was the result of a partner. You know, until then, they were barren, you know. Mm -hmm. So that fruit came through partnership. And so that's what we want to look at today of how we can begin to bear fruit, uh, you know, with our partner. Um, the first thing Jesus did in his ministry is went out and chose the 12. You know, those were his partners, the partners in ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to be careful of who we choose as our partners. You know, if I speak to um, anyone that's not married or, uh, you know, you have to be careful. Of course, you know, we know that as Jesus chose those 12 in those, that 12 was Judas, you know. Uh, but Jesus knew what he was doing. But sometimes we don't. We have to be careful. Don't choose a Judas, you know. You have to, and we just instill that in our children. You know, be careful who you choose to partner with. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, in the beginning, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of history about uh, of David and I and how we started our, our partnership, I guess, in the Lord. And, of course, it wasn't in the Lord when we first got married. Neither one of us were saved. We were, I was raised in church, and he went to church periodically, you know. Um, so, but I felt like that there was something missing. <laughs> Easter and Christmas, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I... I uh, began to feel called back to church you know I wanted the Lord in my life there was things going on and I felt like that I wanted to pray to God but I he in my mind I said you know he doesn't even know who I am you know so I knew that I had to get back into church and get back in, in the fellowship and I accepted the Lord and uh, you know he, he didn't go to church with me at first you know I took the kids with me and um, then I been, you know, young in the Lord, you try different tactics to try to get your, your partner with you, you know, dragging them along. And um, so he, he would be out in the garage working on his tractor, and he would be down there, you know, on his knees working on something. I'd say, hey, won't you say a little prayer while you're down there, you know? Or um, I'd drag my kids to church, and I'd, I'd put this guilt trip on him. You know, I'm, I'm taking these kids to church. They're just wild. I can't even hear the pastors pre preaching, you know, and so those little things trying to draw him to church, you know, of course I had the whole church praying every Sunday morning. I'd stand up and say, I'm believing for my husband. Pray. He needs to be in there, you know. Yeah. So eventually, <laughs> he came. <laughs> he needs to be here. Um, so because I, I had the Lord, I, ha I was beginning that relationship with him, but I still didn't have my partner. You know, I mm -hmm. needed my partner. Well, eventually he, he did get saved and and, uh, you know, he, he, he later on said, you know, when you first started going to church, I felt like that you had another man in your life. I was very jealous, you know, and that's the kind of the way it was because you have a relationship with the Lord. But in le until you start binding yourselves together with your partner, you do feel kind of left out, you mm -hmm. know. So we were moving in that direction. and um, It's kind of hard to compete with Jesus, <laughs> by the way, yeah. as a husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's perfect, and yeah. we're in process, right? <laughs> Amen. No. 
But Amen. I have to say, you know, he, he was saved and he took off like a racehorse, you know. Um, he just, in the beginning, I think it was a little, a little legalistic. Um, there were things that we couldn't <laughs> do. Zealous. You know? I was zealous. Zealous, okay. <laughs> zealous. <laughs> Good word. I, I, one night, this is, but, but one day, this is, when I look back, I think this was so lack such wisdom, you know. <laughs> But like had no wisdom in it at all. But, but I worked night shift, and I got this this thought. You know, we we need to just quit watching TV. So I put this little sticker on the TV, and it said, "Remember, Jesus is watching too." <laughs> and when I came home that night, she was not very happy. <laughs> Don't you think I know what you know? Our kids need to see and not see, you know. And so I peeled the sticker off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when looking back, I probably was a little legalistic now when I think about that. <laughs> our, our one, our Missy's very festive. I, you know, she's a festive, crafty person. So one of her favorite uh, holidays was Halloween. You know, the, the Halloween decorations and stuff, and 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 uh, you know, I, I'm I'm working night, she's working days. I come every come home, everything's decorated in Halloween, and I'm like. You know, I had my friend I was riding out to work with. He said, that stuff, you know, that Halloween stuff is demonic, right? Which we, we haven't celebrated Halloween for years, you know. And, and, but, but back then I thought, he's right. So I'd take those decorations down. <laughs> and, and then, you know, it took her a few days to catch that one. The sticker was like immediately. She's like, that, you know, this is gone or that's gone. And, and, uh. I, and I, I think I said something along the lines, which is hard for me to even pray with that stuff in the house. So, yeah, I was v extremely legalistic now that you bring that up. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> uh, you know, he would, like I said, he took off like a racehorse, and he was just hungry for the meat of the word. You know, and the, the church that I grew up in was, it was a Pentecostal church. You know, you, you, we sang our songs and we, we jumped around and we clapped and we, we just praised the Lord. You know, sometimes you didn't even get to the word. And, um, but he was just so hungry. And we, if the pastor did preach, you know, he would have his Bible open. He'd have all of his note stuff ready, his pens ready, and he's got his pen there ready to write something down. And it was the same message every week. And it wasn't really, it was just touching the surface of the Word of God. You know, and that's, that's what they knew. Um, so, and he would close his Bible, and he would sit, and he would listen. And I, the Lord began to speak to me, it's time for meat. It's time for more, you know. And I was just, I was comfortable in the smoothness of the milk, you know. It's, meat is hard work. It's mm -hmm. hard to chew meat, you know. Amen. And so... He was just beginning to speak to me, you, you know, I want you to dig in deeper. And so we end up eventually left, left the church. We went to the pastor, and we, we explained our hearts, and he was um, completely behind us 100%. And so we moved into what we uh, call the um, faith church, mm -hmm. uh, full gospel. Charismatic. Charismatic. And so yep. we just, um, you know, just got filled with the Holy Spirit. Then praying in tongues, you know. Once we, once you do that, once you reach that point, there's no going back, right? You know, there was no going back to the Baptist church I grew up in. You know, once I started praying in tongues, that pretty well eliminated that. So we were. <laughs> or you know, it's true. When you when you move, there there's things you leave behind when you push into the things of God. There really is, and and it's uh, you know. It can be heartbreaking at times, but you, but you, you do it. You move forward. Mm -hmm. so, amen. So it wasn't long after that that he, he shared his uh, announcement that he was called to the ministry. And I didn't know what to say to that. I said, I, I, I'm not pastor's wife material. I grew up seeing a pastor's wife. I know some of the things that she has to go through. Sometimes it's not pretty. You know, I, 
I married a drummer. He's a drummer. You know, <laughs> there's gospel songs that you can drum. You can be a drummer. I promise you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Stay in your box. Stay in your lane or whatever. That's what she was saying. So I'm still yep. putting up my yield sign. God, no, slow down. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, I finally, you know, he just dealing with me, dealing with me, and so, uh, like he said, we got filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we just boldness came, you know, and. Uh, so then I guess I, I threw up my white flag of, uh, re, um, what do you call it, uh, surrender. Right. I surrendered, white flag of surrender. But, um, let's see. Well, and then, too, we had, you know, different prophets. There were several prophets that moved through the church and would continually give us words. He kept telling him, study, study, study. You know, you're going to teach. And, and then they would look at me and say, children's ministry is always going to be a part of your ministry. And there's going to be children around you. And anywhere I go, you know, children just come up to me, you know, and just start a conversation. And, hey, how you doing? You know, so they just, I see that. And I see, you know, mm -hmm. that he, he had to study. I had to give him time to study and get the word in there because God was doing something. We didn't know through this whole process what he was doing or what he had in store for us. Mm -hmm. But we knew that he was partnering us together for kingdom purposes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also want to talk a little bit about during this time of newfound relationship in God, you know, we also were raising three children at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a season all in itself. Um, you know, they went everywhere we went. You know, if we had a work day, uh, sometimes we would have work, work day at the, uh, one of the churches that we were at, and some, the um, mom would call and say, were you, are you having uh, some children's workers, somebody to keep the children. Like, no, we don't have anybody to keep the children during work day. Well, we can't come then, sorry. You know, we put a paintbrush in our kid's hand and say, this little spot right here, you paint this spot. The Lord want you know, and we just encouraged them and just included them in everything that we did. And we believe that when we know and this day that they were partnering with us as well. You know, mm -hmm. they're running our church today. You know, mm -hmm. our daughter's doing the worship, and, and my son's pastor, and, you know, he's doing the word today. So we knew that it wasn't us alone either. So then we began seeing the kingdom purpose, and now we, you know, see right. that. At that time, like, like well, in ministry, uh, when I was pastoring at, at another location, assistant pastor there, we had a work day. And one of the members called and said, yes, yeah, said, said, we'd like to come to the work day. Do you all have, are you having child care? And I'm like, no. Well, you know, you bring the kids and you let them. That's what you do. They come with you. This wasn't, you understand, this wasn't, this was a work day. You can have the kids right there with you the whole time, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, no, that was a learning time, a chance to teach, right? No, you bring them with you. We'll do this together. We're, and if people would invite us to do stuff and, they, and we couldn't bring our kids, don't invite us. They're part of, you know, if, if, if it's adult only, we're, you know, we're probably not going to come. You know, if, it, if it's no, no children are welcome there at, at your house, we're not welcome at your house. You know, and, it, and it's the same way. We're going to get to this being like as a church. We're, we're in this together, you know. Uh, yeah, we had cell churches, and we would meet in each other's house, you know, once a week. And we took our kids with us, you know, and, and our oldest daughter, that's when we first realized that she had a prophetic gift. Um, she was sitting next to a prophet one night, and he started speaking a word over someone, and she just kicked in, and she would almost finish, finish his sentence. Yep. You know, and that's when we learned. And had we not had her right there with us, <laughs> I don't know that we would have known as soon as we did that she had a prophetic gift. I remember once one of the kids were over to the side of the, the, the church, and and they said, stretch forth your hands and pray for this, this person. And, and that when we did, the, you know, and the minister's praying for the guy, he falls out in the spirit. And my daughter goes, wow. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, stretch your hands out towards this one. And she's running across there like this, you know. And I was, you know, I was, they were just exposed to it. And, and, it's there. and in ministry, even the, the, uh, the negatives at times. You know, but we would just talk about it. This is, you know, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, pastors smell like sheep. You get, you get your hands dirty. You get in relationships. They don't always go the way that, that you'd like them to go. It's part of it. You know, it's part of ministry. Mm 
Amen. And something else at that time I wanted to, to say that when Melissa started, we, we were constantly one of us ahead of the other. Same in church, same in you know marriage. We're one's always ahead of the other. And there was a there was a, a, a minister one time that said, you know, sometimes you got to slow down and wait on the other one. And I determined at that time she's not going to have to wait on me. If she's going deeper into things of God, I'm going to push myself to go deeper because I don't want to be the one that's holding my wife back from what God's got for her. We, we were talking last night and when she's talking about I wasn't in the church, I, I'm ashamed, I guess, not. I mean, I've been forgiven, but I don't even remember Melissa getting baptized. She says I was there. I don't even remember. I've got zero recollection of it. Because like she said, I was a little, I wasn't overly joyed that my wife's now going to church. You know, I went because I think, you know, it's going to look bad if I don't go see my wife get baptized. But, but uh, I don't remember it. It wasn't a momentous occasion to me. You know, and I look back and thought, man, I should have been celebrating with her, you know, and been a part. But I've determined I'm not going to let me hold her back. If she's pushing in, I'm going to push in, right? And drag the other one along, right? <laughs> Whatever you have to do, just keep, keep moving together, flowing together. And so through all these transitions, you know, I believe God was moving, like I said, into um, His kingdom partnership, um, if you will. And then the, the scripture came to my mind, uh, and I think you made reference to it this morning, a, a cord, a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And, you know, when we say in, um, in when we do a marriage ceremony, and the uh, two shall become one, you know, and so, but it's, it's a process. You know, it's just a process. So he's going to mm -hmm. talk about I'm going to read that. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So he relates our relationship like that threefold uh, cord, you know, and you know how it, one, one fiber just breaks. You wrap three together, there's strength there. And, and when we talk sometimes about, uh, in, in the negative sense, about a tri triple braided cord, it, it's like you ever, you ever have somebody in the negative seem like every time we get together, we gripe about the same things. <coughs> That's you, them, and that argument you have or that uh, uh, pet peeve you have. You know, it's like every time it's like, gosh, we think we'd be more positive. It always pulls up this negative thing. Well, that's a triple braided cord, right? Well, with me and Melissa and this word, guess what? That's a triple braided cord. The Holy Spirit, you know, me and Melissa and the Holy Spirit, that's a triple braided cord, you know. And, and anyway, I, I thought of this illustration because we, we want this to be a, a, a strength for your church, learning to flow together as a church. And as Melissa said, we started going to a charismatic church. You know, we were young Christians. And, and, and I had a family member who had uh, passed away, and I believe it was my grandmother's funeral. We were, we were there, and we were at the, we were at the cemetery. And our pastor, I, I made reference to the, some of my grandma's family. They came in from different places. And, and, and there was one group. There was about five or six of them over there. And I said, yeah. I said, no. I said, I said they're Christians. I said, they're, uh, you know, they had been involved in, in uh, TBN, and, and they, but they were Assemblies of God. And I said, they're Assemblies of God. Now, a lot of you have Assemblies of God background, I believe, you know. I love the Assemblies of God. That's where I do a lot of my studies, you know, through a lot of the materials. I'm, I'm not, you know, I was raised in a Baptist church. But he goes, he goes, yeah, they look like they're Assemblies of God. And I thought, and, it, and I'd never really thought about it. And I thought, they do kind of look alike. <laughs> I mean, it, the way they were dressed and, and, you know, I had come out of the world, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, so I didn't. So I hadn't really even thought about it. And I thought they do. They just had the, the the look. You know, they they were they had comfortable clothes on, but they were dressy. You know, 
Their hairstyles were the same. They looked almost exactly. I, I think, He's right. And then I looked over at some of you know, the, my other friends that were Baptists, and I thought, they kind of look alike. <laughs> they had their shirt, they had their suits, and then they had the ties, and they were, you know, and they were, and then, and then I look over at my friend that said that, you know, in the church, and they're charismatic, and I'm thinking, they look alike. <laughs> they, they, they had their, uh, the thing then was flowery shirts hanging over their pants, like golfing shirts, I call them, you know, or more like vacation in, you know, and, and I thought, he was exactly right. I got it. it was the first time I noticed it. Sometimes churches even start to look alike, you know, and and uh, and you know because we we influence each other, and and it was it was interesting. So anyway, I thought about that this morning, right? So I thought, here's what we want when we learn to flow together. You guys ready for this? I'm gonna. So here's a triple braided cord, right? That's, you know, that's the only one I can find at the store, that, but it's it's a triple braided, it looks like, and 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 it, it kind of, you know, if, if I cut several sections of these, they'd all kind of look alike, right? But as a church, here's what I thought we need to look like. More like this. All the different colors in there, right? That's why I said I had gifts for everybody. I'm going to hand out some gifts. You just pass these down. <laughs> Told you it wasn't very expensive. <laughs> Didn't get your, your hopes up. <laughs> no, not going to win any. Uh... I don't expect these to be hanging on your wall or anything. <laughs> you get Joe one over there. Got you some some cords. Amen. That, this is why it's so difficult sometimes. Because in reality, that's what we are. A lot of different colors, shapes, sizes, uh, personality types, uh, giftings, attitudes. You know, I, and, and I was, um, when I first started, when I first came into the church and began to... Um, interact with people. Before, Melissa says I was a little hard, but I was also kind of had, to, I always had a personality that I could talk to people. But my whole goal in life was to get away from people. To be honest, we bought 10 acres of ground, I was going to clear that, and I didn't think that was enough land. You know, it's like, I want to live this homestead with me and my family by myself, and people just leave me alone. Right? Come along and, amen. Come along and, come along, amen. But the problem, but I guess the problem or the positive of ministry is it involves people, right? You know, it's, it's, it's like uh, uh, Jacob, Missy said she's, she's children's uh, uh, minister, which, I mean, it's, it, I'm definitely not. I love kids, but they would run over me. You know, I sit down and try to try to talk to them seriously, you know, and they're like... Uh, but anyway, Jacob, he, my son's his first year teaching, so we went up to the classroom at the beginning helping him set his classroom up. And I loved it because I'm like organization. Cubbies for everything. The place is just, you know, or, it's completely organized. I told Jacob, I said, this is awesome, man. This would be the perfect job if it wasn't for kids. Because <laughs> I know once they come in here, this is not going to look like this. It's not going to be perfect anymore. But, but so, so when I was thinking learning to flow together, it's, you know, what we're talking about with our marriage, but it applies to the church. Because right? we're all different. And there's different personalities. One of the, the, the eye-opening things to me is when we learned personality types years ago. Because there was a lady in our church that just rubbed me wrong. I, we did the one where there's you're a flagmat. I was a flagmatic. Now if I do it, I'm kind of equal on on all of them. But but you know, we just kind of like to go along and get along with everybody. And she was the the domineering one in the church. Remember that? And and I mean, I just bumped heads with her constantly. It's, she's she's bossy. Uh, she you know this lady was bossy things like that. And then we did the personality type things, and I realized that's just her personality. And the Lord began to show me her heart was the same as mine for people. 
it was the same. Probably even more so, you know, because she would she, she knew that her personality, uh, she probably felt rejection all the time just because of her personality type. You know, when you, when you're that that five to ten percent that you're a take charge person, not everybody likes that. You have to sense that, right? But your heart is to move things forward. Amen. And I had to learn learn that, you know, and then that, you know, Jesus died for her too. Not just me. Them people that I don't get along with, you know, he loves them just as much as he loves me. You know, we used to joke that I'm his favorite, but really I'm not his favorite. We're all his favorites, right? And and we had to learn to flow even with in the negative. You know, it's it's um we're like that bright colored cord. That's how I want our, you know, our church to look. I don't want everyone to, to look exactly like me. I mean, it's a compliment when, you know, like Paul said, as I follow Jesus, follow me. In other words, the other areas of my life, do what you want to, right? You don't have to look like me, dress like me, talk like me. Only on those things where I'm following, following the Lord. Amen? And that, that's what our goal is for the church. When, when we were uh, pastoring in Louisville, we talked about this last night at, at supper. We, we had about 50 kids in the children's ministry. And we, we uh, was assistant pastors at the church there. And it was a diverse church. Like in, the, in amongst the children were the perfect example. You know, red and yellow, black and white, they were precious in his sight, right? We were every mixture of that in the church. You know, not a, you know, not every every race represented, multiple countries, and then all kinds of blending of all that. It was a beautiful church, wasn't it? That children's ministry was. Be- you see the faces of those kids. You're like, oh, uh, we're we're all different, but we have to learn to flow together as one. You know, and 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 within the church, you know, uh, I'm going to Psalms 133. Am I still in your your end of your message here? Go to Psalms 130. Psalms 133. One night we were we had the intercessors pre at the church and and uh, they were they were intercessors. I always kind of avoided them too, you know. The, inter- the, the intercessors, you know, I'm talking about like floating around the top of the ceiling, spiritual people, you know, and I was more line upon line, you know, and, and, and felt intimidated by that, you know. And like, like one time I'm walking through the church and the intercessors are in there, and I don't know what they're praying for, but they're going, push, push, push. And I, I know they're pushing things back and calling things forth, and they'd act this out, and, you know, I'm just walking through, just trying to get through to my <laughs> office, you know. So, so. As the, pa- as the pastor, the intercessors, this group of ladies were having an all-night uh, uh, prayer meeting, and I, I got done with work. I was, I was doing janitorial work. Got done about 2 in the morning. Thought, I need to run over there. And, and uh, as the pastor, see what's going on, you know. And I, and I go in, and, and they're intense prayer. But then they would stop, and they'd all get in a circle, and they'd play music. And it was gospel music. It wasn't praise and worship music. It was more gospel and and they get clapping and get singing. Well, and then one of them would just kind of dance down through the middle of the circle, you know. And they'd all cheer and clap. And, and then Joe, uh, my friend that's there, he's kind of from from down around uh, uh, Destin, Florida, and he kind of had a Cajun feel to him, you know. Joe's a, 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 a older white man, you know, and and so so Joe, he just kind of does a little jig down through the minute, the middle, and then they go, Pastor David. Well, something about this song, I just could not get the rhythm, you know. I tried to do something, and they rolled laughing at me. And I, I never lived that down there. Anytime they'd say something about, you know, white guys not having rhythm, they'd all turn and look at me and, and point, you know, and I was like, I, I had to say, hey, I'm a drummer. I've got rhythm. No, you don't have rhythm. <laughs> that, but but it, it's beautiful when there's differences, you know. I loved that, the differences I loved, you know. And that's what in 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 our marriage, the fact that we are 
uh, so different in so many areas is what makes it worth doing. You know, none of us want carbon copies of each other to hang around. Then one of us isn't necessary, right? <laughs> if we're all exactly the same, uh, then what's, what's the, where's the joy and uh, the fun in that? Amen? Uh, who can you make fun of, right? <laughs> Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. You know, we talk a lot about walking in the blessing, amen? Well, where's that blessing? It's in the unity we have. You know, when you get unity in a group of people, the blessing is right there. You know, that we're seeing that in our church. Uh, there's, our church is beginning to just be blessed in every area. Marriages, finances, and, and when I, I knew that, that we were at a, a healthy level and the unity was coming is when I wasn't involved, I, things begin to happen I didn't know about. Relate, you know, things, birthday parties and people doing stuff. You know, when we started the church, it was all uh, communication, me to me and back, right? When, when I started getting kind of left out of stuff, I thought, that's the healthy thing. The church is growing. It's healthy. They're, the relationships are healthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, in this triple braided cord as well, you know, when you're braided together with, with others, then um, you're, the closeness is there so much that um, you're able to discern things, you know, discern when somebody's going through something. You know, if somebody's normally coming in the room and they're shaking everybody's hand and smile on their face and saying, hey, how's it going? And this morning they come in and they may go back to the restroom and they'll come back and maybe mosey onto their seat or if something's not right and you can feel and discern that something's going on with them and they may not have, I mean, they may feel like, well, if I come to you, I'm just going to bust out in tears right now if I tell you what's going on with me. But if I go to them and kind of pull them aside and say, hey, I notice you're not yourself this morning, what's going on? So that's the closest that we have in that triple braided cord. Um, and there's times that when somebody, when he's up, and I'm down, you know, and he's down and I'm up. And sometimes I have to say, well, don't you remember when we went through this and what God did in that situation? He's, he'll do it again, you know. There's times when we have to lift one another up. And same thing in, in the church, you know. We have to be there and know that somebody's going through something and, and we can lift them up and keep them, keep them in that feeling like they're in that triple braided cord and not feeling like that all of a sudden they've loosed and they're over here by themselves. We well, always want to make sure that they're bound together with us. Um, Pastor Debbie, th this morning, the way you, you encourage people to take the mic around, that's such a blessing to me because that's what you're doing. We're in this together. You're going to overcome this. You're gonna, that builds us up. That builds yeah. you up. Yeah. And, you know, there's been times Melissa will say, well, well, where's your faith at? And it'll just irritate me sometimes, <laughs> you know. Right. Well, what, you know, she'll point out, we'll have, you know, have you talked to the Lord about that or, you know, something along that line? And I'm like... We live a life like carbon copies. Yeah. <laughs> what are you know? Hey, Debbie. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's not easy, but it, it's, you know... So one, one thing that, that we have is that covenant that even if we're not happy with each other, we know the covenant's not in jeopardy, right? And that you apply that to in a church. You can have times that you, you, you know, things aren't always smooth, but as long as you keep that covenant tight and you, you begin to love each other's differences, you know, and, and uh, you know, someday you can write a book, you know, about all these personality types, right? <laughs> and, and, and move forward. Amen. Let's finish this off in Luke 5, verse 9 and 10. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So every, if everyone is moving forward, 
together, then success takes care of itself. And this was the ultimate reason for that partnership was make them fishers of men. You know, as people come in here and they see your triple braided cord and see the love for that you have for one another, they'll want that too. And that's how we draw and we fish. You know, we just draw them in Unity. because they want that relationship. They want the relationship that you have and they see you have something that they don't have. And it's going to lead them straight to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that that's, if I wasn't in a church and I lived here, I'd want to come to this church. After coming in and seeing the interaction you have and the care you have, I'd be thinking, I, I want that. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be sitting in the back and be a little awkward at first by it, but people are hungry mm -hmm. for that. You know, the, a, a pastor once said they, they don't care what you know. They want to know that you love them. They want to know that you care, right? And it's true. Uh, I want to close with this. You, you got anything? No. I'll close with uh, 1 John 3.16. Because, you know, everybody knows what John 3.16 is. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, right? But I think this is, is equally an important is 1 John 3.16. It says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because He laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That, that is our, our calling. Mm -hmm. Not just pastors. That's all our calling. to so lay down our life for each other. You know, uh, I remember when we were, were learning about marriage when, and, and loving you know, each other and caring for each other, I thought I'd lay down my, my life for my, my wife. You know, if we, if we went out here to the convenience store and a guy pulls out a gun holding up the store, hopefully I won't be like this, <laughs> right? I would be blocking. I think that's a man's geared that way. He should be. I'm going to block my wife and my family. To get to them, he's going to have to come through me, right? Oh, yeah, I would lay, you know, I'd, macho, I'd lay down my life for my wife. But, oh, yeah, well, what if laying down your life means you turn the TV off and you help with something, right? Or I'd lay down my life for, for, for the brethren. Well, what if that means, you know, cleaning some toilets or showing up at church? You know, that's laying down your life, not, not dying. Laying your needs and wishes aside for someone else, right? And, and that is what develops that cord, I guess, you know. That, that's how we flow together. And it, it's not, you know, it takes, uh, you know, can the pastor count on you? That, to count on you, you have to be there, right? Let me see your fingers. Let me help me, you know, it, it's presence. It's not just, I'm going to be praying for you. No, I need you in my presence when we're doing things, when we're doing, you know, outreaches and and. You know, with, with Melissa, yeah, I lay down my life for you. Well, okay, can't you give up, you know, some of the stuff you're doing so we can spend more time together, right? You know, that's laying down. There's a commitment there. There's a flow and a commitment. And, you know, that, that to me is as important as Scripture as Jesus. God gave His only begotten Son, you know. Now, this is our, our place, First John 3.16. But we're going to pray, and I've got... Uh, I told Melissa this morning, I said, what's nice is when, when we minister together, sometimes, you, don't, you know, learning to flow together, you know each other's strengths. And she probably didn't even realize it till I told her th th this morning, was that sometimes, like, if we're praying for the sick in the church, I get caught up in what's going on in the room. You know, the back here, this new couple comes in. Are they comfortable? Here's, you know. So uh, so then we go right in and we're going to pray for the sick. Why? If I can step back, I'll begin to hear God's voice in the direction that we're supposed to go and recognize, you know, Melissa's strengths or someone else. So a lot of times I'll say, uh, Melissa, won't you pray for this person? Well, there's a, there's a reason for that. That gives me an opportunity to hear, to build on what, what she, she's doing. I don't know if I could put that in words. As a church, you learn each other's strengths. And as, as little as it might be, her starting that prayer, it's, we're flowing together because she did start that. Uh, you know, the, all the things you do together as a God's people, 
work together. There's no little, there's no less important thing than the other. In our family, you know, that the little things with the, with the children when we were raising them, it was, it was we learned to flow together. Uh, the, the older two who said, you know, had to deal with me being a little bit legalistic, they're like, man, Dad, You've lightened up. And I'm like, well, we were just practicing on you two. <laughs> By the time we got to number three, we were better. We, we understood, you know, we, we, we were really the blind trying to lead the, bl the blind. You know, we didn't know what to do. We, you know, when you have kids, it's like there's no, uh, they don't prepare you for that. We went to, to birthing classes. All they prepared us for was the birth. <laughs> and then that was pretty, that really could have thrown everything they told us out the door when that happened. And then, but then you got to, you take the, the kid home and the child home and you're like, you do not know what you're doing. You really don't. And you, and, and, and you know, we were practicing. So like, I don't know what that had to do with the message actually, but we, <laughs> we are, we learned to flow together, and it took time and a lot of work, and there was a few times we wondered what was going to happen, right? Because it wasn't going real smooth. But, but now I look back and think, man, we're, we're truly walking in the blessing of God with our family. We really are. You know, my kids let me be a part of their life. They're involved in our, our ministry. They're, you know, it, but whew, there was times we didn't know that was going to turn out like that, right? It was, we were confessing it, but it was, and, and in the church, there's been times there's tensions arise and things happen, but you know, gosh, when you look at us as this diverse group of people, all different, you know, I, I have to step back and say, do I want everybody to think exactly like I do? We got to agree on what the Word says, but we're all going to have different angles and different shadows and types and th th ways of seeing things. Uh, we, we say with our, our new members class, you don't have to agree with us. Just don't be disagreeable. Don't cause division. You, but you don't have to agree with us. We're family. We're creating a, you know, we're, we're in a family unit. And Melissa doesn't have to agree with everything I say. You know, it might take her time to get over to my life. <laughs> but she doesn't have, you know, uh, Jake and my son, you know, he's a big IU fan. He marries into a fan of, of uh, our family of UK fans. You know, one day he, he posted something, told his wife something about, uh, he, he put a post something about Bobby Knight, and his wife didn't know who Bobby Knight was. She's not really a basketball fan, but his fa her family is all UK. And Jacob said, I had to explain it to her. And, and then the next post was from her mom. and says, don't listen to him, baby girl. You know, like, you know. Close your ears, baby girl. I think that's what she put on there. And, you know, there's differences. There really are. We like different things, but that doesn't mean we can't be effective. That's right. And, and, and kick the devils behind. Amen? That's right. Chase him all over the place and, and whoop him, right? When there's unity and diversity. Amen. You know, uh, I said that, you know, when Melissa shares, it gives me the opportunity and we talked about this morning, if we're sensing anything. And, you know, a words for anybody or anything like that. And I really wasn't hearing a, a, a whole lot. But I, I do have something for Pastor David. Because, you know, as pastors, a lot of times you try to lead the sheep gently, right? And sometimes I think as a, as a pastoring gift that, that can be a strength or it can be a weakness, right? And so I'm not saying it, but, but for you, because this uh, struck me by surprise, actually. You know, you usually know it's God when it's something that you wouldn't have said. But he said that you come in like a mighty rushing wind. You're like a mighty rushing wind. I don't know what your preaching style is or anything, but when you come in the room to the people, it's like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. I'm not going to go beyond that, but that's what the Lord, the Lord told me. Like a mighty rushing wind. So, amen. I don't know if that means you just, 
you get off, you know, the Pentecostal roots. But I, I don't even think I don't even think it's got anything to do with style or anything. It's your presence and what you're bringing with you. Amen. Amen. That's how I want to be when I go to work. You know, I'm I'm kind of like the prankster at work, and I'm thinking, man, I I need to start believing God. I'm like the mighty rushing wind coming in. Uh, you know. Amen. Amen. You, do you have anything? Amen. Well, we're going to close. We're going to pray for for uh, a flow in the church. Amen? And now turn it over to, to Pastor. Amen. Father God, I, ju I just pray as, as we shared on flowing together in unity, Lord, I just pray for... I, I know that this, this congregation, there's a flow there, Lord. There's, there's a, a, a... Oh, a covenant relationships there's strengths lord and and that 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 this house has a pastor that 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 loves and have pastors that love and care for the people and and for and, and embrace lord uh the diversity that that's here lord and i just pray for an increase in that flow lord and how they flow together Father, that when someone comes in this room, that every gift will work together, Lord, to reach that person, Lord, and 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 to uh, bring deliverance. When somebody comes in here and they're and they're heavy and burdened, Lord, not even in this house, in this building, but into this church and into the presence of, the, of these people, Lord, I pray that there's a flow to reach that person, Lord, and uh, and it's as diverse as those cords, Lord different colors, different personality types, Lord. Let them all mesh even even more and, and, and grow stronger in you. In Jesus' name, amen.